Well, good morning, everybody. The sun has just come out. It's just before dinner, and as you can see, the pond's going well. A lot of rubbish on the bottom. The trouble with that algae is it doesn't let it drift towards the drain. It gets caught in the algae. This is why I'm having to hoover quite a bit. But yeah, pond's all good, fish are good. What I want to do in this video is I'm going to try and sort these nitrates out basically and I've got something I'm going to put into the water we'll see if that works and I want to change the piping I'm going to be doing some pipe work in the field house I've just turned the air off so you can get a decent look at the koi and in the pond that's what I should be doing in this video I hope this sun stays out it's beautiful out here at the moment it's been really overcast and we had a bit of rain first thing but this is wonderful it's actually been about a week and a half nearly two weeks since i did my pond so i'll give it another bash in i might get myself some resolve see if i can do something with this algae that's coating the bottom because it isn't letting the dirt travel down to the bottom drain uh, see if i can get out the sunlight as you can possibly see that's the four foot end it's four foot deep up there for those of you that don't know the hoovering wouldn't go amiss at the moment but we'll get the other jobs done first and then think about giving it a vacuum out i do realize that getting rid of the algae won't help my nitrate problem so i certainly won't be doing anything with algae killer at the moment i didn't remove it as things are Right, well I've just done a water test on the pond on my nitrates and it's not as bad as it was, it has come down, it's not as red as it was, I think it's between sort of 20 to 50, it has come down quite a lot. What I'm going to do, while I've still got nitrate in the pond, I thought it was a good chance to try this stuff out. Now this Envy nitrate clear claims it will remove the nitrates from your pond so I am going to give it a whirl and see how it goes so I thought that would be a good opportunity to find out if it works really a lot of people seem to buy this stuff so I'm going to give it a go we're not as bad as we was it has come down a little bit not a lot but it has come down a bit I'm going to give this a go and see what happens now it does say on the packet one tablet per 2,000 litres of pond water into a bucket. Now I've got 10,000 litres so I obviously want five tablets. But it says if the nitrate is quite bad, double dose or even triple dose. Well I'm going to double dose it. I'm only at 50 milligrams a litre so I'm going to double dose it. I've got two watering cans filled with pond water so I'm going to crumble up five tablets in each and leave it for two hours as instructed then give it a good stir and add it to the pond so we'll see what happens I have done a water test we're running at very close to 50 milligrams a litre of nitrate in the pond so we'll see if this does anything to it so I'll get these crumbled into the watering cans and leave them for a couple of hours and then give them a good stir and add it to the pond okay I've done one I've put five tablets in the light green can. It does say crumble them up, but hey, you're supposed to crumble them up. I don't know, apart from getting a hammer. Don't know whether you guys can see it in there, but uh, I have sort of tried to break them up. But boy, they are hard, really hard. Now, I've got another packet I've opened up. Now, this is the six come in a packet and five I wanted for 10,000 litres. Now, that's the first packet I put in and this is the second. They look totally different. So whether that means anything or not, I don't know. These are all like black freckles in it, but these were pure white, the first ones I've put in. So whether that makes any difference or not, I don't know. But I'll get these five into the second can and be back in a couple of hours. Now, just had a quick look on the packet and there's no sort of expiry date on them whether there should be or not I really don't know but the first packet I took in took me all my go to just snap them up into pieces let alone crumble them and the second packet with all them little black flakes in I'm sorry the builders are making a blooming noise today the second packet with all them little flakes in broke up really easy and are crumbling in the water I don't know whether you guys can see it but they are actually crumbling down in there 
whereas the first pack is still in the lumps I put it in. So whether I've got a duff packet there or what, I don't know, but they were totally different tablets. The second packet crumbled really easy. I can only see how it goes, but totally different tablets from the first pack to the second pack, so not sure what that means. But we'll give them a go anyway and see what happens. Right, it's had two hours now, so I'm gonna give it a good stir and then we'll get it in the pond so i'm going to get this a really good stirring up especially this one because it didn't break up very well it was as hard as anything so we'll give them both a good stir and get them in the pond okay guys i'm now going to get it in the pond hope you don't hear the uh, shouting and mouthing off next door uh, a bit of a nightmare I'm afraid but we're going to get it in the pond and see what happens and then we shall do some nitrate tests over the next day or so and see how it all goes okay that's one bucket in don't know whether you can see them but there are big lumps of white bits floating in there this is the one that didn't break down very well so that's rinse the bucket out to make sure there's none left and now I'll do exactly the same with the other one all right well it's all in there now so we'll just have to see how things go I have actually turned my UV off I didn't read anything about it I don't think unless I missed it but I turned it off anyway but I don't know if you can notice I've actually got three or four lily bloody builders I've actually got three or four lily flowers showing but they are a bit beaten up as you can tell they've had a good old bashing about but they are there that's it that's it all in so all we can do now is see what happens well good morning everybody we keep getting a little bit of sun and then it disappears again I'm afraid as you know put the envy nitrate clear in I put it in 48 hours ago so it's had two days now so I'm going to do a water test just to see how things are going yeah everything's fine in the pond all's going well the trouble with having the short growing algae on the bottom of the pond nothing drifts towards the bottom drain anymore it just stays in the algae that's why my sort of hoovering has increased slightly I hoover it out about once every week and a half to two weeks I'm going to do a water test and we'll see whether this nitrate clearing has worked. So I'll get a sample and we'll have a look. Okay guys, that's my sample mixed up and it's going pink already. So I'm not holding my breath on this one. But we'll give it the 15 minutes and see how everything goes. I'm sorry about the flickering. The phone seems to be a bit anti-blooming filter house at the minute for some reason with this flickering. I can't seem to stop it. Well, there you go there's the test results it's not touched it it's just as bad as it was in fact it's probably looking a little bit worse and that was after a double dose of the NV nitrate killer it hasn't touched it at all I'm cutting back on the food as well now I do believe one of the problems with this nitrate problem could be I am now feeding the Backy River from the actual up filter and protein filter. It goes through both of them and then in the Backy River. So whether we're getting too much air in the water and the uh, anaerobic bacteria don't like it or what, I don't know. So I'm gonna have to change that. I shall reroute the outflow on the two filters and get it its own feed. See if that makes any difference. But it does seem that I'm getting these problems since I've fitted these two filters and I've got the flow, the outflow, going back into the Backy River. Trying to kill three birds with one stone really and it doesn't seem to have worked. So I've got that to change. I think that could be causing a lot of the problems. Well good morning everybody. Now what I want to get done today is I want to repipe the protein skimmer and I also want to repipe the Backy River so that's my project for today so I see they've been having a go at me lilies again 
Do you know what? I had five or six, seven lilies sticking out there the other day. But as you can see on that one, they're just pulling them to bits <laughs> and sinking them, the little devils. But yeah, all's good in the pond, all's good with the koi. No problem there. But a lot of piping to do, so I want to get on today. It's quite a big job. I've got to route it from the actual RDF to the back of the river. And then I've got to reroute the outlet on the protein skimmer to the outlet of the moving bed. So I'm going to get stuck in with that. Um, the problem is I won't be able to video a lot of it because I've got to shut my pond down completely. And I've also got to drain down the moving bed. So I'm not going to get a lot of time for videoing. I'm going to have to be as quick as I can because I've got a lot of pipe work to do and no water in my moving bed. So I'll lose my bacteria if I'm not careful. So I've got to do it as quick as possible. So I'll get stuck into that and then show you what I've done. Well, there we go, all done. Now the river I've teed into here so that it's getting water straight from the RDF. So it's had no air mixed with it whatsoever. That runs around there and into the river. So it's getting water that hasn't been well aerated, basically. And now the actual upflow filter and the skimmer the feed is exactly the same, it still comes down here, across and in at the bottom there. But the outflow now comes out, across and joins the outflow to the moving bed. So that goes straight back to the pond now. Totally independent. Could be something to do with my nitrates playing up a bit ever since I've put this in and ran it through these filters because the water when that's running the air in it must have been colossal and that could be a lot of the problem with my river or my nitrates. So now it's coming straight from the RDF. We'll see if it makes any difference. I'll just keep an eye on my water level now and just see how things go but that's a lot better. They're both independent now, which is really good. Okay, here we are in the spilled house. It might be a little bit quieter in here, but as you know, I re-plumbed the outlet from the skimmer. That's all I've done. I've taken it from here and taken it so it now goes into the outlet with the moving bed instead of coming round here and going into the Backy River. That's all I've done. Nothing else has changed. This is the third morning and there isn't an ounce of skimmit in the bucket. Now I know you do say well, I want it to get smaller bubbles, but it has been working. There's been nothing wrong with it at all and it's been turning a multitude of skimmit out and my water got to be like glass. It was absolutely impeccable. But all of a sudden, because I've changed the outlet, I'm getting nothing, not a drop. This is the skimmit I was getting overnight. As you can see, it was making plenty of skimmit, but all of a sudden, nothing. What has caused it to stop working, I have no idea. All I've done is reroute the outlet, and it seems to have stopped for some reason and is making nothing at all. So, total mystery. This is why I can't release plans. This is why I like to give everything a really good run before I do anything. I can't see how it could have been working so well and I've just changed the outlet and it stopped. Well, there we go. After a week of that Envy nitrate clearing, nothing. Still as bad. Running high actually. We did get down to about 50 but it looks like we're back up to 100 again. I gave it a triple dose as well because I put the other bag in and it hasn't touched it. Well good morning everybody. Once again, I've just whipped the fence off, I've just come out, it's about half eight-ish I think, and all looks good in the pond, everything looks fine. What we're going to do is go in the filled house and see if we've managed to make any this morning. So we'll pop and have a look at that first. So bear with me. I did just unlock it, but I haven't been in there yet. So, uh, let's have a look. I'll put the door right back, else the wind catches it. Okay, 
Oh yes, we're back to normal. We're back up and running. Thank goodness. <laughs> These things can be so temperamental now. Why didn't it make any at all for three days? Your guess is as good as mine. But yeah, back up and performing. Great stuff. It's a real miserable, overcast, dull, dull day here today, so they're giving rain again. That'll be novel. What you will notice on this is now I've got the new outflow. Just see if I can move them buckets out of the way. They're just empty ones I'm chucking out. What you will notice is on the outflow now, I don't use a brass screw slide valve tap, the brass ones. They're quite expensive, they're getting on for £30 each. So what I wanted to do was try something different. So I've put a ball valve in there as you can see, and what I did was adjust the water level to roughly where I wanted it, as close as I could get it using the ball valve. But then I actually fine-tuned the outflow using the pump. As you know with these pumps you can take them up one watt or down one watt or you can get quite a fine adjustment on them. So I got it as close as I could with the ball valve and then I just fine tuned the water level with the pump. I put the pump at about 60% and then adjusted the ball valve, got the water level as close as I could using the ball valve and then like I say just fine tuned it with the pump and it works a treat. So there's no need, as long as you've got one of these very flow pumps, there's no need for the actual brass slide valve. So a good saving there. Also, I've found out the level of where it works the best, switched it off so there's no air in the cylinder at all. And what I have got around here is two water marks. So I've put two water marks on there, and that, as long as the water level's between them two marks, when there's no air in the tube, it works fine. So I have actually found out where the water level wants to be with no air in it, so that I can adjust it with no air flow and get the water level about right, and then when it cuts in at night, it's all set to go. But yeah, it's good to see we're making skim it again. Like I say, these can be quite temperamental, as we've just seen. But we're back up and running again, thank goodness. That's great news. I'll just switch the air off to the pond and we'll just have a quick look at the koi. So I'll just put that off and we'll go and have a quick look. It is really dull here today so I'm not quite sure what we'll see. But yeah, all's looking good down there. We're not going to see too much, just starting to spit about with rain as well. But. Uh, we're not going to see too much, there's no sun, it's very dull. What I want to do at some point is rearrange these air stones because they do spoil the viewing of the koi because they're all down this side, all right in the way. What I'm going to do is try to move it, try to move them so I've got two going off down that end and then a couple off this end, either side, and probably try just one in the middle. I want, still want to keep the five. So I'm going to do that at some point, see if I can improve the viewing when the air's on. There is a bit of reflection on the pond, so what you can see I'm not quite sure on my screen. That's my future intentions anyway, just to see if we can rearrange these air stones a bit. But great stuff, all's going well again. Okay, as you can see, I've had my plastic welding gun out, and I've got some of the new media up here. I've also got a bucket of water to wash it off in and what I'm going to do is I've raised the actual weir in the back of the river I've raised that about an inch so it's lifted the water level in here quite a bit I don't know whether it will show on camera but what I'm going to do is put a layer of this new media across the top of the sipper axe so it can only help so I'm going to do a layer of that across the top there and see how much difference it makes, see if it helps with these nitrates. Now I was saving that to do a shower, I'll get another box if I need it, but that's what I'm going to do, just drop a layer of that over the top of this stuff. And there we go, a nice layer across the top and we'll see if that helps things. 
if it doesn't help anything I can always take it off later and it'll be ready matured for whatever I want to put it in but hopefully that'll all help it does look good media I must admit it goes up to about 10 times its weight once it's immersed in water it really does soak some water up so yeah I'm looking forward to it making some difference to be honest I'm impressed with it I have to say and it is actually JS Coy that sell this so if you want any get in touch with JS Coy they're the ones that's actually marketing this selling it so get in touch and have a word with them but I'm impressed with it I must say I'm not getting anything from them I'm not getting paid for it or anything if I didn't like it I'd say so but I have to say I'm well impressed with it up to now it's quite light when you pick it up but if you put it in water and then try to pick it up it's got to be 10 times its weight it does absorb a lot of water so yeah seems good stuff anyway guys from a really dull miserable day here in the south of Lincolnshire all it leaves me to say thanks for watching you all take care and as always happy ponding Thank you.